now my next question is why did you pick architecture is it is there what are the reasons that you settled on architecture and uh, not anything else yes you've said there's a financial motivation behind it but are there other uh, motivating factors that made you pick architecture so architecture was no surprise uh, for me i think um from a very early age, uh, me and my other brother, Brolin. Um, Brolin taught me how to draw mm -hmm. when I was young. Mm -hmm. uh, Brolin was an amazing artist. Mm -hmm. So Brolin would, um, Brolin would draw my tattoos mm -hmm. with the calligraphy. Mm -hmm. Brolin would do calligraphy for his school. Mm -hmm. All the certificates he the one would do. And so I really got fascinated at his technique. So then, in, I remember this very vividly in class two, Brolin taught me how to draw a gun. Mm. <laughs> yeah, he taught me how to draw a pistol. Okay, mm. okay. I remember I was really fascinated. <laughs> I was really fascinated. But the technique he had taught me mm -hmm. was to chase. Mm. Which none of my classmates knew. Mm. So I remember the first time I came from home with that photo of the gun, mm -hmm. guys were really fascinated. They were like, Doya knows how to. True, true, true. I went back and told Broly, hey, <laughs> let's, let's do more of this. Let's say, yeah. keep doing this. And then we got better. Now there's a time me and Broly would do, um, me and Broly would do, um, we'd, we'd draw with pencil. Mm -hmm. And then now to make it look even more sterling, mm -hmm. uh, we'd go and photocopy. Mm -hmm. so oh yeah, I remember kids. that. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. This would be like one, 150 cents. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, that changed the game. <laughs> that changed the game. Uh, um, so from then on, I was interested in drawing. Mm -hmm. My earliest classmates can remember I could draw best in my class. Mm -hmm. uh, towards class seven, class eight, I switched schools to go to a boarding school. Mm -hmm. And then boarding school, now we had weekends. I didn't enjoy entertainment as much mm -hmm. because um, I didn't get the choice to pick the movies, so sometimes mm -hmm. I will not just enjoy what's going on. So I developed a hobby that would take me through the weekend. Mm -hmm. Because we had preps all weekend. You know, mm -hmm. from day school, mm -hmm. weekends we used to lay around. So now you have preps all weekend. Okay. And so I just started drawing because I was bored mm -hmm. in class. Mm -hmm. So I started drawing. I remember I loved drawing houses. Mm -hmm. So I just tried drawing. Plans mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. So every weekend I'd ask my friends uh, some could be my number. Mm -hmm. So then I would draw and this I had developed because my grandma's house was being designed at that mm -hmm. point. I remember. Yeah, mm -hmm. so during that process when they brought the architect home, mm -hmm. uh, I remember him removing the blue chains and I was so fascinated. I remember we were there for that holiday, we were there for holiday. almost a whole month. I yeah. was really fascinated mm -hmm. at what he had done. Mm -hmm. He was actually a draftsman. And then I saw the dimensioning, and I think I just loved the detail mm -hmm. in that piece of paper. Mm -hmm. And so I copied it from that moment, and mm -hmm. now he taught me this is how you do a door. Mm -hmm. A gap in a black line, mm -hmm. it's a window, mm -hmm. and you need to dimension like mm -hmm. this staircase. From a very class seven, I really knew how to communicate graphically. Technical drawing, I knew it from an elementary level. So I would do a lot of this in the, over the weekend. When I'd go for holiday, it became the same thing. I barely used to play outside. Mm -hmm. So this is what I'd do as a hobby as my neighbor. Let me design for you. I was how many three bedroom Okay, So I was thinking we do this, this, mm -hmm. this, this. Mm -hmm. And we sit there, then we'd laugh at how it come. Mm -hmm. I developed it to the next level where now I try and imagine because of how the walls have come, this guy taught me, okay, so this if you see this projection on the plan, it means it has to reflect also. Outside, mm. they taught me a very simple way of interpreting how an elevation should look mm. right from just looking at the floor plan. The floor plan. The floor plan. Mm. And so I did that throughout, and my dad noticed mm -hmm. at some point. And then I told him, um, actually, I want to become an architect. Mm -hmm. Then my dad told me, yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. uh, however, um, it's, it's not quite marketable. Mm. It's not quite mm. marketable. The architects are more self-employed than mm. they're employed. Okay. Mm. The ones who are doing well mm. are self-employed. So I dropped that dream because I didn't get enough push. Mm. Mm. People just felt it was an artist kind of thing. 
So I want to go back. Yeah. Uh, that takes me back. That takes me back. So my question is, it was very clear to, to it, or rather it is clear to me, yeah. um, what you were meant to do from the beginning. Mm -hmm. It's very clear to me, mm -hmm. all right? So then why did you land in med school? What was your motivation towards joining med school? When, when I leave primary, I go to high school, I'm still so searching what I'm gonna do with my life mm -hmm. after high school. Mm -hmm. uh, my consideration at the whole of high school, I remember first year I was about to be an actual. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was because you had a friend mm. who was doing actual science. Mm. So I went and checked out on the internet. Most high spin jobs mm. actually look like they were making a lot of money if you mm. remember those things. Mm. I remember. Um, and now my motivation was mm. mine. Mm. And then there was aviation. Mm. I wanted to be a pilot. Mm. I actually wanted to be a pilot. So bad for a big part of my career. Because I imagined uh, a pilots get well paid, mm -hmm. motivation was my mm -hmm. at this point, mm -hmm. they get well paid and secure their jobs at a very early mm -hmm. age. There is so much studying mm -hmm. also, it's just licenses and then the rest of it is practice and hours, mm -hmm. which gets you to the next level, mm -hmm. but the reason I went to Maseno. Mm -hmm. And then at no point did I think I'd do medicine until you began doing, I mean, you were doing medicine at that point. Mm -hmm. But towards the end of my high school, I think form three, you graduated. Mm, mm. When I was around it, form yeah, three, you that's graduated. A, accurate, yeah. yeah, and there was so much glory around everything, mm -hmm. from the graduation to whenever we were stuck, even when you were in med school, people would just show up because mm -hmm. they did mm -hmm. because they did mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, There was so much goodwill around it. I thought, I thought it was the Lemewa. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I finished this and um, I remember when you finished and you went to Isiolo for your internship. Right before you went for internship, the story I've always told my friend, my friends, um, you came home, this is uh, probably those first days, you came home and um, my mom wanted a fridge for the longest time. Mm -hmm. um, and Grace showed up and he was just like, the moment, I don't think you need that anymore, so it's okay, we'll get it. Uh, came out, came with so many gifts, and you could just see my mom's um, excitement mm -hmm. at that point. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, this this looks rewarding. <laughs> this <laughs> seems like the right thing yeah, to do. <laughs> this, this actually looks like the right thing um, to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, I said, okay, let me follow in this mm -hmm. steps, and I actually have somebody who can guide me yeah, through. through yeah. Mm -hmm. A whole circle of you, your mm -hmm. friends. Mm -hmm. Imagine this is going to be the softest landings mm -hmm. of, of, of all. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, uh, maybe I followed in your path mm -hmm. um, throughout in my life. And then this was like the world's defining moment, rather than mm -hmm. a defining moment. Like, no, you know, you need to go to find your own path. Yeah, you need to go. You mean, it's just painful that. Um, it had to take those two years of med school, which went with a significant amount of my self esteem mm. and mm. depression and all that. Mm. But I'm glad I went through. Mm. And that's the that's again um, just to cue in that that's the purpose of this video. Mm. That sometimes um, some lessons become very expensive in terms of timing, mm. um, even sometimes in actual financial cost. That it had to take you two years to discover, like, hey, you need to cut your own path. This far, yes, you have a common path, mm. but this is the path where you diverge. Mm. But also, it is important to understand that had you not failed, you'd probably be a doctor, maybe a miserable man, and that. I'll admit um, to date, there's one thing I chase so much in my life. Um, I, I don't chase money as much. Um, in my life right now, um, as I used to chase those days, I don't chase um, so much. It's one thing I chase so much in my life, and I'm so clear about it is actualizing. Mm -hmm. um, just being happy with what I'm doing, mm -hmm. and actually, as abstract as it may be. Mm -hmm. So I would have been a doctor, but 
never actualized. Mm. You know, just be going through a routine, mm. pick up what rounds. Mm. And I never think I would have survived because I hate hospitals. Mm. Being a doctor is hard, eh? yeah. And I naturally hate hospitals. Mm. I hate that environment. So it will be very, <laughs> very, <laughs> hard, very yeah. hard for me to um, wake up in that working environment mm. every day, every day of that. That is miserable. Yeah, happy miserable. Um, so you see, that two years saved you probably 20, 30 years of your life if you look at it from that angle. It's true, mm. but when when the two years are coming, mm. this is probably for anyone who would hear this. Mm. We've assigned a value to time, mm -hmm. and so we always imagine this is where it should be mm -hmm. um, at this point in your life, which is something I'm glad I got rid of mm -hmm. in my head, mm -hmm. and it even helped me get rid of all that mm -hmm. stigma. I just understood that this is my personal time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the things that don't make sense, the things that are not typical of how it should have been, mm -hmm. I should have graduated after four years mm -hmm. or six years, mm -hmm. and I came to realize by the everyone just mm -hmm. as they've done, remove the idea of time, mm -hmm. just race with time with your own goals. Mm -hmm. But when you start comparing, I've lost two years. Mm -hmm. And so when I look back, I've, I've actually never counted that I lost two years mm -hmm. in med school. Mm -hmm. The only way, out was through, mm. and I, I felt it made a better mm. person. Uh, who knows? I've never discovered myself mm. unless through that. Mm. Mm. Whatever I learned in med school, that's knowledge I'll take for the rest, mm. of my life. Mm. rest of my life. Yeah, I still know uh, anastomosis mm. and gluteus maximus. <laughs> gluteus maximus <laughs> and the vision. I know the uh, anastomosis of the knee, uh -huh. shoulder, uh -huh. synovial joints. <laughs> Ah, great stuff, great stuff. I hope you're yeah. taking notes. I have you had powerful <laughs> messages. The only way out was through, and it is important that you take that in life. Um, another um, really important thing you said that is that you didn't look at it as you've lost two years. Mm -hmm. And actually, if we are to be very honest, if if we are to put it into perspective, I think you gained two years. Mm -hmm. Tell us, at what level are your former classmates right now? Yeah, so it's unfortunate the school that is the best in medicine, arguably here, mm -hmm. that's the uh, University of Nairobi. Uh, the system just slows you down. Mm -hmm. Even if you're the best student, you just have to toe the line. Mm -hmm. And so there's so many breaks in the middle, mm -hmm. like the strikes and all that. Mm -hmm. And today, the, the class I would have been, if I never really took, I still would have. Completed school. school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You'll be now in your final year. I'll probably be in my final year. Oh. Hoping to graduate if no yeah. strikes yeah. or anything. And, and then, then corona, corona came. And then Corona <laughs> came. <laughs> um, uh -huh. Yeah, so I think once you remove that idea of chasing time mm -hmm. and the stigma that comes, just you know, it, it's inside your head. Mm -hmm. You can start from anywhere. Mm -hmm. You can start anytime. Mm -hmm. And you just move with your dream. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I always say the best time to start is now. It's now, of course, yeah. definitely. It's not now, <laughs> yesterday. Yeah. Okay, now. fantastic, fantastic. Now, we're about to get into the story about um, Ark School. Mm. Um, and I want you to tell me about your first days of first uh, days. architecture. Mm. Um, yes, just tell me, how, how was it settling in? So the first days, um, I'm in a new environment. Um, first of all, I've come to a class where uh, the AIDS thing was still there. <laughs> so I'm getting into a class where um, I felt like a big kid. Mm. You were the oldest guy in the class. I thought so. <laughs> I, thought I, was, I thought I was the oldest. Uh -huh. So I was always like, okay. Um, luckily, I demystified it in there. Mm -hmm. So I got comfortable very quickly. I got a few uh, friends. Mm -hmm. um, of course, I was always avoiding uh, my peers mm -hmm. who um, were like in third year. Mm -hmm. The people who graduated. Oh, yeah, yeah. From high school, you're talking about? Yes. Yes, These but ended up in, in art school. Are there guys from high school who you met at the art school? Not from my school. Okay. Yeah. But my social circle I was in that class. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, I've come, of course, I was always avoiding them. And then. Um, there's also a lot that happens in art school in first year. Mm -hmm. um, 
that if you're not careful, can get into your head. Because mm -hmm. the entire first day of an abstract class, mm -hmm. they teach you art. So you know, you come with your rulers and everything you need to draw houses, and then they put them all aside, and then the first year, one of the first lessons you're given is you have to rewrite the alphabet. Mm, A, B, C, D. Yeah, A, B, C, D. Which actually, <laughs> you have to write A, B, C, D. Uh -huh. In every lesson, you write A, capital, mm -hmm. and another small case. Yeah, so um, it's confusing. Mm -hmm. You come from medicine. Mm -hmm. No, go university. Go university. <laughs> you A, B, C, D. Unfortunately, I didn't, I didn't understand. Mm -hmm. I explained the value of what this would be has done to me. Mm -hmm. So I'm writing the ABCD, I didn't understand that, I was like, okay, just, just be a student. Mm -hmm. it, it will make sense mm -hmm. later, later. Uh, another thing we used to do a lot in class was you sharpen your pencil at the beginning, and then you are given a piece of paper before the class begins, you are supposed to write, to draw lines, mm -hmm. and don't sharpen it again until it runs out. Mm -hmm. So the lines are supposed to be really close to each other, really, mm -hmm. really closely spaced. Mm -hmm. and draw across, across without a ruler, you mm -hmm. finish, you turn it, draw, 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 draw. Mm -hmm. So the thickness would keep changing mm -hmm. because you started when it was sharp, mm -hmm. so it's really, it's a mm -hmm. thin line mm -hmm. and then it gets thicker mm -hmm. towards the end, no sharpening. Mm -hmm. And we do that and then at home also you were supposed to come with five papers the mm -hmm. next morning. Mm -hmm. So I remember actually at some point we had a small family get together mm -hmm. in the house. <laughs> And uh, people are there having fun, and I'm like, hey, guys, I think I need to go and do my assignment. Mm -hmm. and I rush the study, and um, I start my assignment, you know, so that I can go back and join people. And then someone came and walked in and found me there. And I never forget the shock on their face. Mm -hmm. with, um, uh, they were like, we're from med school, and you keep to, you secret yourself to do an assignment. You're writing A, B, C, B <laughs> on a piece of paper, and you know you just written and written. You have to keep write on five sheets, mm -hmm. um, which I told myself it will make sense. Mm -hmm. It makes sense. It's okay. Mm -hmm. um, and also I want to trust. They also don't know mm -hmm. how this is going to make sense. Mm -hmm. So fair enough. Mm -hmm. Trust the you'll process. You will prove it to them. Mm -hmm. and make sense. Mm -hmm. Today, uh, why I appreciate the value of whatever happened. Mm -hmm. Maybe even my lecturers didn't tell me the value of this. Was you'd be required to go today? I can draw a straight line um, when I'm standing up, mm -hmm. uh, comfortably. Mm -hmm. I mean, I used to post sketches, mm -hmm. and people would wonder mm -hmm. how do you do that without. You see, all that mm -hmm. so much practice that I've gone into what I didn't understand I was doing, mm -hmm. and now it makes sense. The ABCD. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would learn later that there is an architectural font type mm -hmm. that architects and you need to communicate so your letters can't be joining mm -hmm. each other. Mm -hmm. The people on site need to just see very easily what has been. You can't be writing like a doctor. You can't be writing like a doctor. Yeah. <laughs> you need to see what has been written. And I appreciate that value because I had to learn writing the alphabet afresh mm -hmm. for me to fit into this mm -hmm. profession. To date, because of that, if I go to site, I can very easily explain a concept without going back to the office mm -hmm. to make technical things. I can do it there. I can write it. Mm. You don't need to tell someone to bend over and write on their exactly. back or something like that. Ruler, yeah. you're standing. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. And I didn't appreciate that when it's happening. Mm -hmm. And this was the early years of, this is what it was for me in first year. Mm -hmm. And of course, I was also working uh, on the side because mm -hmm. I needed to raise my fee mm -hmm. and to support myself. Mm -hmm. I didn't want anyone to remind me of my mistakes. Mm -hmm. So I wanted, uh, let me just do this. Things will fall into place mm -hmm. much later. Mm -hmm. And I went through the entire first year, and one very reassuring moment was that I passed mm -hmm. my exams. Mm -hmm. And I excelled in a few other assignments we did in class mm -hmm. that made me feel yeah. in the right place. I also found myself doing assignments on my own. Mm -hmm. So I felt like, I felt a self-drive. Mm -hmm. I felt I could wake up and just go to school without um, any being bothered, mm -hmm. being bothered about it, I felt the value in my time, mm -hmm. um, even around that mm -hmm. environment. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was just waiting to see how my results go mm -hmm. to reassure me. So the results came positive. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, let's do it. Mm -hmm. By the end of the first year, 
there was less stigma. Okay. People who were talking had mm -hmm. given up. Mm -hmm. So now it's, uh, mm -hmm. we've got time talking yeah. about him, so let's just move on to that. Yeah. I, I normally tell my wife that uh, let people talk. They didn't start talking yesterday. Mm -hmm. They won't stop talking tomorrow. Let them talk. The most important thing is, are you on your path? Mm -hmm. From what I hear you saying, is that one of the signs of knowing that you found your journey or found your path is self-drive. If you're able to get up in the morning without anyone waking you up to go do whatever you need to do, mm -hmm. not because you need the money, not because you are required to, mm -hmm. and that's how you are reassured that you're at the right place. Mm -hmm. I think self-drive uh, has, the, the reward has to be very intimate to you, mm -hmm. not even mine. Mm -hmm. The self-drive is what keeps you the space, mm. there's no there's no money, there's no, there's money. no reward, there's no reward. Mm. That's why I'm saying the reward is very really intimate. Mm. It's just how you feel mm. out of what you're doing. And for me, I felt a lot of that mm. in art school. I was really rewarded by assignments I do from 3 a.m. in the morning all the way to 7 a.m. This was new to me. Mm. Uh, but I loved it. I played music the entire night and I just love the process of creating. Mm -hmm. It's very intimate. You're mm -hmm. just you alone, music, mm -hmm. coffee, mm -hmm. and the whole night. Mm -hmm. uh, and for me also, it was a lonely journey because no one has ever been an architect in my family. So no one actually understood what's going on. I'm introducing them to this field. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know it then, but I loved that. Um, I just convinced my mind um, it will make sense. Mm -hmm. Just keep going, it will make sense later. Mm -hmm. Good, good, good. So um, I think we're close to the end, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, but I have a couple of questions. One, um, who are the significant people in your life? If you were to go back in time and say, these people helped me carve out my path for me, or I can never forget um, this one thing this guy told me at this point, or the support, the kind of support I got from this person and mm -hmm. things like that. Um, people who helped you find your path. Um, and how did they help you find your path? Um, for one, um, the architecture bit of it, um, to be honest, that was purely my own initiative. Mm -hmm. I didn't even have anyone to consult mm -hmm. about architecture when I was starting out. Mm -hmm. um, people who help me actually break out of routines and become something outstanding would do this later in third year. Mm -hmm. um, this is going to be a slightly longer, but in third year was when I realized um, school was taking up more time. Um, and now for the first time in my life through art school, I realized I could no longer balance work and school. Mm -hmm. So it was a very tough realization for me because I was like, you know, this work sustains me. Mm -hmm. And I need school as mm -hmm. well. But uh, whichever I choose, one, uh, one will be the receiving end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so one has to give. Mm -hmm. And it was a very difficult situation because now um, my rent arrears were piling. Mm -hmm. uh, I was struggling to keep up with my comfortable lifestyle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> that's a school that is on my neck because it means if you're working more, mm. the school suffers. The school suffers. In this case, now I decided uh, I don't want school to suffer, and so for sure this other side was in tatters. Mm. And so, uh, of course, I had to make very really tough decisions. Mm. Uh, one thing we promised ourselves uh, um, in this journey. Um, at this point, I had to question, okay, so they need me in school for almost 10 hours mm -hmm. a day. Mm -hmm. So that means I can't work. So the promise I made to myself was, um, if, if at all I would spend 10 hours in school, then school must make me money. Mm -hmm. Then it will make sense. Now this school needs to support me. Mm -hmm. um, and that's when I finally quit my job. Mm -hmm. And decided uh, to go that way. So at that point, there are certain individuals who came into my life to mentor me. Mm -hmm. I think I give so much credit to um, my peer mentor. His name is Mark Chiari. Because mm -hmm. I always, um, he was where I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. uh, 
um, he was working for the top architectural firm in Africa, mm -hmm. uh, and he was still in school. Mm -hmm. um, he was exceptional. He had um, first class honors. Yeah, he was where I wanted to be. So I always ask him, how, how, what do I do? How do I get these jobs and all? Mm -hmm. And he he always held my hand and he would sit down with me and tell me do this, mm -hmm. do that, do this, do that. Um, these are people. Um, this is one person um, that created a lot to um, in this journey. He was very instrumental. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's fantastic. That's good to hear. Um, the other question I have for you is: Are there lessons that you had learned from uh, from med school mm -hmm. um, that you now applied to art school? Mm -hmm. um, just to foster your success or make art school easier for you? Um, that's an interesting question. Yeah, to be fair, um, first, just the entire science of, um, the entire science of um, medicine mm -hmm. as a whole. Uh, everything was taught um, today. Uh, we are pitching for jobs to design hospitals mm. and I understand things a lot better how mm. things should work around a hospital because of what I gained from that. Uh, I've worked with clients who are doctors mm -hmm. and I've always told you sometimes in my pitch um, I introduce medical jargon mm. and suddenly my work becomes relatable. Yeah, yeah like, like okay, 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 that makes sense. Yeah. Remember when this blood vessel does this, mm. this is the corridor, mm. and everyone is amused. Uh, it works, of course, to, to, mm. my, yeah, to my favor. Um, yeah. Um, med school, let me see, I wasn't too passionate about med school. Mm -hmm. so it would be hard to say there was quite a lot I implemented mm -hmm. from, from there. Actually, part of the question I'm asking you is there are lessons that you learned from the failure of med school failure or are there, are there lessons that you learned from that failure mm. that now you came to our school and you're like, okay. So let me give an example. For example, you said in med school you discovered that the lecturers only give you 20% and the rest of the 80% you have to go and find for yourself. Mm. Did you carry that to yeah. our school, for example? Professionally, I've learned... Um, I never do anything for the sake of it mm. from a professional point of view. Mm. Right from the project, um, we will decide to engage. Um, I have to make sure my whole heart is invested. Even before I send out an invoice, I'll actually sit down and it will take me weeks before I actually sit down much as somebody might imagine it's just an invoice. But I'll, I'll, I'll never do anything for the sake of it. I, it has made me an extremely passionate individual mm -hmm. the things I want to engage mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, compared to what I did through med school. I mean, it's like reverse mentorship. Mm -hmm. You learned that this mm -hmm. is how far to be, this is the result. Mm -hmm. And then now you have to apply yourself to take things to the next level. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. Um, there's something that just has come to mind right now, um, and, and maybe this is a mental note for myself. Um, to be very honest, I hope my son becomes a doctor. I know that is a big mistake I'm making. Uh, but the point I'm trying to make is that, like you rightfully said, uh, Brodin taught you a lot of, uh, of drawing, mm -hmm. and it fascinated you. It's true that he was a fantastic artist. Mm -hmm. um, and I think some of these lessons, you know, they cut across the board. I know you're not at this level where I am in life right now, where I'm a parent. Mm -hmm. But what I'm carrying from your lessons and from your story is the fact that, mm -hmm. hey, if I see that boy start picking up pencils, I know, hey, okay, my, 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 my dream of my son being a doctor is, is, is over or something like that. I have to let him carve his path for, him, uh, for himself, all right? Just, you know, tweak it here and there and just make sure that he lands where he's mm -hmm. supposed to be. So I'm still learning from you or from your story and what I hear from you, okay? Um, at this point now, I want you to tell me about 
your journey of starting uh, London Consult. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps tell me a bit fast uh, what London Consult. Uh, you can tell me, yeah, now um, in, in depth, like what does London Consult do? Mm -hmm. And then tell me your journey to starting London Consult. So, third year. Mm -hmm. My brother, and towards the end of second year, he was in school called Hectic. And this is when I approached Mark here and asked him, okay, so why can I get a job? Already, also, my mom and also your personal concern was um, I need to do something related to my field, if at all I was going to be working. Okay. It was something that would always be taking all family meetings. Mm -hmm. I'd be next year, you promised you'd be doing something in this for the longest time. But then I never had the courage to just step out. I wanted a really soft landing from my mm -hmm. job mm -hmm. to wherever I'm going. And I tried to apply to a few um, architectural firms, maybe two. Uh, but then every time I'd get a conversation with these people, um, the director of these companies, they make it clear if you're coming to my firm, you're coming to learn. Mm -hmm. So we, we won't pay you. And my, my, my defense was always like, um, well, no worries. Um, but then just sustain so that mm -hmm. I may be able to come the next Day. Next day, yeah. yeah, and no one would, would ever accept. And for me, I always question myself um, do I have some value mm. as I come to this? And so, when third year came, and um, I just decided um, it was going to be school, I had to take a complete lifestyle change. Mm. Okay, mm. that mean I had to no more soft life, no more soft life. Mm. So, <laughs> I moved back. The uh, first thing they did, I, I moved back home. Mm -hmm. So I was like, uh, the strategy was I need to get my expenses to meal. Mm -hmm. Or close to meal, like I can survive on nothing. Mm -hmm. And at home, there's always food. Yeah. There's, uh, the basics are that you can actually survive without a cent. Mm -hmm. But during that period, I wanted to build myself and increase my worth as professionally. Mm -hmm. Um, when I see it now, it looks like I knew what I was doing, mm -hmm. but I wasn't. I was also just trying to, probably everyone should know this, mm -hmm. when you're starting your days alone, mm -hmm. it's that thing you think, let me wait one day to build up, this is how it begins. Mm -hmm. And so when I stayed home, um, taking that whole lifestyle change, um, I, I borrowed a laptop. Mm -hmm. And um, I installed Wi-Fi at my folks. I was like, yeah, those are the two things I need. And um, started teaching myself um, just how to use uh, design softwares. At the same time, I always wondered um, how will people get to know what I'm doing. So it didn't make sense at that point. But then I was like, I was going to start something called Sketch a Day. Mm -hmm. Oh. Guys, I need to tell you about a sketch a day. We miss a sketch a day, by the way. We miss a sketch a day. A sketch a day is uh, this thing that um, Adi used to do on Instagram, and he would uh, kind of uh, hold your hand through the whole design process or the, the preliminary stages of the design process, mm -hmm. and he would draw a house from scratch. Mm -hmm. That freehand thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I used to love it. We, we don't see it anymore. Speaking for the fans out here, man, you want a sketch a day, Mark. But keep going. Anyway, so we started uh, a sketch a day. Uh, for me, uh, I knew this is mentorship for Mark as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I kept asking Mark, how can I work for the best in Africa? And uh, my dream was always, at, at some point I was applying for jobs, I told myself, if I don't get to work for that farm, mm -hmm. then I'd rather not, um, I'd, I'd rather not work at all. Let me just do my own thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so Mark started priming me and I'd meet him and ask him, okay, Mark, I want to apply, go through my visa and tell me if it, if it makes sense, what do I need to add, what do I need to remove? Mm -hmm. um, and then I remember one of the most, um, most um, groundbreaking ideas Mark would tell me that we live in forever. Mm -hmm. uh, he looked at all the complaints I came with and he told me, okay, you've complained too much. Mm -hmm. um, what's, your, what's your strength? But what can you do without telling me about laptops and mm -hmm. all that? Mm -hmm. He told him I can draw. And he told him, okay, focus on your strength. Just just work with that. If you're going to pitch to us, come with your sketches. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started, I started the, 
Mm-hmm. So it was very simple. We just walk out to the streets uh, every day and you pick a random building mm-hmm. and you just sit and then take a 10 loss video sketching mm-hmm. out mm-hmm. the building and then we post that mm-hmm. every day. So it got so much traction because now people would see this on Instagram and mm-hmm. get really excited, mm-hmm. especially because it's a 10 box. You just yeah. say, oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and when we started this, uh, which also this, this this should go to so many people who should realize sometimes you 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 have something but you actually don't know it's what mm-hmm. because we decided we we didn't we just thought of a passion we weren't thinking about money mm-hmm. we just let's let's just do something and mm-hmm. get started towards that dream mm-hmm. and so people noticed that work and people started believing these are the best mm-hmm. this this guy is true mm-hmm. this is this is really good work. And this would introduce us to another world mm-hmm. altogether. Okay. Because somebody would later on notice this work on mm-hmm. social media and he would suddenly assign value mm-hmm. to what we had been doing. We didn't even know we were artists. Mm-hmm. And then this person says, Okay, I think this is worth this much. Mm-hmm. And so we moved from looking for a job. Um, this took almost six months. Uh, we st- I stayed home for six months. Um, there's always this thing they've always said, I mean, Kirub even recently posted on his Twitter, that six months can make all the difference. I'm, I'm a living testimony of six months can make mm. all the difference. Six months of consistency, consistency. Yeah. something mm. uh, can put you two years ahead mm. of your field. Mm. Uh, in those two months, uh, I did sketch a day. I learned how to use a, a, a design software. Mm-hmm. I learned how to render and visualization. Mm-hmm. Basically, I just push myself to the limit. Mm-hmm. I have no expenses. Mm-hmm. I just use it. You had nothing else to do. I had nothing else to do. Uh-huh. And I told myself, no matter how bad it gets, mm-hmm. I'm not going back to work. Mm-hmm. I'm not going back to that job. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I, until this makes sense. Mm-hmm. And so we. I sketched and sketched and somebody noticed and somebody approached and asked us, okay, can you try this small job? Um, do you, he asked me, are you an architect or you know not? Mm-hmm. Okay, try this job. And I tried it. And I think he paid me about 8,000 shillings, which was a big break mm-hmm. after a very long while. Mm-hmm. Uh, which was rewarding. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay. And then it was a build up. Try mm-hmm. this and try this and try this. And we grew from that. Mm-hmm. Um, we would later, after at the end of six months, uh, so much had happened because of all the traction we had gotten on the media, mm-hmm. and so many people had approached, uh, had approached us. Uh, can you design this for us? We've seen you drawing. Can you design this for us? Mm-hmm. And so I set out. Mark had really told me, Adrian, um, just focus on your strength. Yeah, and so I, I would do that every time and um, it, 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 it built us mm-hmm. through getting to interact with more people and more work. Mm-hmm. By the end of six months, we, we were very different people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we were very different people because at the end of six months, I was able to move out of home again. Mm-hmm. And I remember my mom's excitement. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it was rather mixed because mm-hmm. like, now I'm leaving her, she was laughing mm-hmm. back home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For the first time in a while, but then she had seen so much growth mm-hmm. in that six months. Mm-hmm. And she was like, okay. I told her, okay, mm, I'm going back to my house. Mm-hmm. I think now I can afford rent. And for me, it was also very rewarding because now I felt um, I had power through my work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you know, there's that financial security you had in your previous job mm-hmm. that always made you stick. Mm-hmm. And I felt it, mm-hmm. it was my own skill mm-hmm. that now that's a power. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can, I, I can battle it out. I have something within me that I can always sell and take me to the next level. Mm-hmm. And so we, we, we initially started as a private practice, of course, me and my partner. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, uh, individual mm. people. Mm. Uh, then we realized we had so many common dreams. We wanted to set out an extraordinary 
practice. I think mm -hmm. that was very clear from the beginning. We had this dream of mm -hmm. a paperless practice. Mm -hmm. and rather, what we meant by a paperless practice was just we just want to bridge the gap and sell people something relatable rather than the blueprints mm -hmm. which people could not mm -hmm. relate to. And we had this dream of building something that was going to be bigger than that top farm. Mm -hmm. We always wanted to work for, yeah. And we decided let's do it. Mm -hmm. yeah, let's do it. So we decided, instead of us being individuals, um, let's merge our skill mm -hmm. and create uh, a bigger brand that's going to be bigger than mm -hmm. us as individuals. And maybe we'll be mightier mm -hmm. that way. Then mm -hmm. no, no, so mm -hmm. was born. Fantastic. Such a story. Oh my, such a story. Such a story. Um, now, tell me, what does London Consult do? We identified a problem in the market. Mm -hmm. The typical approach when you meet an architect or you have a design job mm -hmm. is um, you go to the architect, you give them a brief, a design brief. Mm -hmm. Basically, those, those are your problems mm -hmm. and your expectations mm -hmm. out of a project. And then um, the client, I mean, the architect is going to take some time to resolve your problem mm -hmm. and present it in a floor plan, mm -hmm. universally, that's a floor plan. But then um, I realized this probably when I was staying at home with my mom, every time I'd want to share with her my school project. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm like, um, you know, I'm very passionate about what I'm doing, I've been doing it the entire night, um, mm -hmm. so I feel like I need somebody to talk to, to mm -hmm. bounce off the ideas. Yeah, yeah, just bounce off the ideas. And so I call her to my room and I'm like, yeah, so mom, this is a corridor, what, what, what? When I finish, um, I just realized she was trying to be um, um, to support me, <laughs> but she actually being a mother. Yeah, she had, she didn't understand mm -hmm. what I did. So I always wondered um, how, how 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 is she going to understand better mm -hmm. uh, what's going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was a problem, mm -hmm. communication. communication. How, how would we communicate the design? Mm -hmm. And I realized that this was not even our problem. Mm -hmm. It cut across the market. Mm -hmm. Plants are not technical in nature, but the drawings are technical. Um, so you need somebody who is very visual, has a visual understanding to understand how floor plans work, and this is a world. And so we started looking for all techniques that can make our work more consumable to the clients. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the first ways we identified was rendering. Mm -hmm. uh, we call photo rendering. I mean rendering is just a projection. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so you'd you'd create the design with all the line works because mm -hmm. that's an elementary value. That's a problem solving bit of design. Mm -hmm. Just the flow and addressing client problem. Mm -hmm. And then after that uh, you build it in a mock-up model in a computer interface mm -hmm. and then through the advancement in technology, mm -hmm. we are able to scale that space mm -hmm. using other objects. Mm -hmm. um, we insert where the computer, mm -hmm. put a table, mm -hmm. a seat, fill that void mm -hmm. so that somebody can relate to the sense of scale and even make comments on mm -hmm. um, comments on the, the length, mm -hmm. width, height, mm -hmm. lighting, mm -hmm. feel. Mm -hmm. So we so I, want to, I want to interrupt you at that point. Oh, you, you've gone technical for a bit and I can feel the passion. It's very palpable. But I want to remind you that you're talking to the same people that you wanted to communicate to. Okay. Yeah, so in that sense, mm. if I understand you correct, what you're trying to say is that the first stage of your creation is what you guys call the line work, what you guys draw on paper. But rendering um, is now bringing it into reality where I can see, mm -hmm. uh, for example, this is where my window will be and then put it in, in real space. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. For example, like I can visualize now the final building because, you know, on paper it's 2D mm -hmm. and it's just a flaw and mm -hmm. I can't even feel it. Yeah. So does rendering mean that I'm able to see? Rendering definitely means you're able to see. What we're doing is, when you, when you come to us as a client, mm -hmm. you have your vision. You completely have your vision of how the spaces should flow. Mm -hmm. Now, what you tend to do is get it off your head mm -hmm. into mind mm -hmm. by giving me the brief. Mm -hmm. 
And so for us, we wanted to give you a more useful tool to communicate that idea. Mm -hmm. While typical architects would have used a floor plan, mm -hmm. it still has to make you think how that space should look. Mm -hmm. We will regurgitate what we have created mm -hmm. with an image. Ah, good. Now, right. until we have an image, there's your idea of mm -hmm. the client, your mm -hmm. client. There's the idea of um, what you imagined your house should look like. Mm -hmm. And then I have my idea of what I imagine yeah. your house should look like. Yeah. And I give you a reference image, and then mm -hmm. suddenly our ideas marry. Mm -hmm. Because from this, you mm -hmm. cannot tell. You got that right. Mm -hmm. You got that wrong. Mm -hmm. Adjust this. Mm -hmm. Go perfect. Wow, fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it is easy to think that that's all we do. Mm -hmm. But then we realized all other techniques that can be used to communicate ideas in the mind better. So number one is we can do a still image mm -hmm. photo render. Mm -hmm. Number two is we can build a a miniature scaled model. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So it's like a toy. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. to the toy you, mm -hmm. you visualize your intention. Mm -hmm. then number three was uh, which was actually groundbreaking for us was virtual reality. Mm -hmm. Now virtual reality immerses you mm -hmm. into the space. Mm -hmm. So whatever we have we have understood of your brief, mm -hmm. we create it in a virtual setup. Mm -hmm. You make you wear virtual reality mm -hmm. uh, headgear mm -hmm. and you're in the space, mm -hmm. you're envisioned okay. and you can make your comments mm -hmm. to that. Mm -hmm. We'll make for you a video mm -hmm. of the entire project you are thinking about and then through that you're able to see, oh, actually that's where the garden is, mm -hmm. that's where and you can make contributions to. The design mm -hmm. and even when you're done with that which we realized initially we wanted to set ourselves up as a visualization and conceptualization mm -hmm. conceptualization because we get your brief mm -hmm. and then we conceptualize it mm -hmm. it's regurgitating it mm -hmm. yeah? that's conceptualization and then visualization studio mm -hmm. however we noticed with most of, most of our initial clients mm -hmm. from the excitement we'd see from all the imagery they get to interact with uh, they see so much value that they feel, I think you guys are a better place to execute the project. Mm -hmm. So now that you've bought my confidence mm -hmm. with my imagination, mm -hmm. can you as well execute it? Execute it. Yeah. So that's when we decided to even grow bigger mm -hmm. and we need to have a team that's going to actually execute it mm -hmm. as the mind had perceived it as demonstrated by this uh, visualization mm -hmm. output. Mm -hmm. So London Consult plays a very critical role. This is actually in finishing at that point. There's a client mm -hmm. who has his design brief. Mm -hmm. And then there's a technical team which is needed to actualize this project. Mm -hmm. The technical team is engineers, electrical, mechanical, civil, structural. Mm -hmm. There's the architects mm -hmm. who are also needed to do it, there's a contractor mm -hmm. who we'll actually and subcontractors who we'll mm -hmm. actually actualize the project. Mm -hmm. All these are technical individuals, they don't even need renders to understand spaces. They they work with technical information that the client doesn't. Mm -hmm. So the, there's normally a very big communication gap between the client and these other consultants. Mm -hmm. So London Consult comes right in the middle where mm -hmm. we first address your problems with the client completely and show you how your brief has been addressed through visualization and all those other techniques. And then once you're completely comfortable with what you've seen, you will then actualize the project on behalf because we understand both sides of the spectrum. spectrum we understand the technical yeah. side and, and we the understand the, the layman's uh -huh. side. Okay. Yeah. That's great. Um, and again, from what I understand, really uh, London Consult is about interpretation. Sure. That you're, you're transferring one um, language mm -hmm. into another language. Yes. Uh, because on this side you have the layman yes. speaking one language, on this side we have the technical team speaking a different language, yes. and you need them to communicate. So you guys interpret. Yes. Again, what from, uh, from what I hear from you is that uh, before London Consult, uh, you would, you'd have a surprise at the end of the project. Like, if I was a client, 
Um, all I had was the line work at the beginning, and then I wait to see how my house turns out or how my building turns out or mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah. Yes. But right now, with London Consort and us guys have done some work with you guys, you're able to show me the end from the beginning. Is that right? Using this technology, we, we can completely animate um, all conditions you anticipate mm -hmm. in the design. Mm -hmm. Weather, mm -hmm. terrain, mm -hmm. texture, everything. I mean, there's always a challenge of um, people trying to... You see, with, with the line work, typical line work, the huge communication differences, sometimes the client's ideas are not suited to completion. Mm -hmm. Through London Consult and our communication, mm -hmm. we can completely develop um, how you expect the project to look, mm -hmm. the final outcome, mm -hmm. very early in mm -hmm. design. design. Yeah, okay. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. That, that, that is very informative about London Consult and I love what you guys are doing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, guys, um, I'll put in the description a tag to their page. Um, you get to see the kind of work that they have been doing. It's tremendous work. It's fantastic work. Um, like I said, uh, we wish to see a sketch a day back at the scene. I, I know I really used to enjoy it and I have a couple of friends who kept saying, hey, you're probably doing something interesting on Instagram. I love what he's doing. So speaking for the fans out there, we would like to see a sketch a day come back. The very f last question I have for you, Throughout your entire story, mm. it sounds like your mother is, mm. is your rock mm. um, and she features quite uh, substantially in your story. Mm. Um, I don't know if you have something a bit more to tell me about that. Is, mm. is this relationship part of what you've become today? Uh, um, yeah. I tell her in, in standing for one thing very valuable, um, she believed in the dream even when it didn't make sense to her. One of the few people, you know, just like me, when it didn't make sense to me also, and I kept telling myself it didn't make sense, mm -hmm. she believed in my dream blindly. Mm -hmm. yeah, and she just went along, she mm -hmm. ran along uh, mm -hmm. with my dream at every point. And I think for that. I'm entirely grateful because sometimes it's all the support mm -hmm. uh, you need. But that just the, the faith she had in believing in my dream, mm -hmm. not as she had never met an architect in mm her -hmm. life, mm -hmm. that was something. Mm -hmm. Parting shots, what would you tell um, uh, Adi back in 2013? 2013? Yeah, what would you tell Adi at that time? Whatever you, whatever you choose to do with your life, um, just make sure you're passion driven mm -hmm. about it. You're passion driven about it. Every every day you wake up. Um, this is what I want to do with my life. I don't ever do things for the sake of it. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how you make very mediocre people, but if you've chosen to be an, understand, an outstanding person, uh, then don't ever do things for you. Thank you very much for uh, gracing us with your presence at the grey area. Thank you for so much value that you've added to the grey area. Thank you for allowing us into your swanky new offices. I love them. I love them. Guys, as you see, this office is fantastic. Minimalistic, absolutely fantastic. I think I am seated at the ground floor of what is probably going to be a, a million dollar, billion dollar business. And I say that without fear of uh, contradiction or favor or anything like that. Yeah. You guys are building something beautiful. You guys are building something fantastic. I wish you all the best in your journey. Please make sure that you share this journey with many people. Part of what this video is supposed to be doing is to be sharing your journey, mm -hmm. to make sure that young people like you don't make the same mistakes. And if they make the mistakes, mm -hmm. it is okay to make those mistakes. The most important bit is to make sure that you learn from those mistakes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so 
I know you still remember Janiki Letganglion and Janiki Lasenjiki and Astomosis and those kind of things um, um I'm also here to reassure you that the journey you have taken is tremendous and I I can't see how it has influenced your life along the way mm. even including the job that you have done I know you haven't shared with the with the viewers what job you were doing before you became an architect mm-hmm. and part of that job has greatly influenced what you're doing today I don't know just before we close in two minutes tell us what were you doing um, the job that you had to quit to concentrate on your studies um i think i was always wired for the techy side of things and i used to fix phones mm-hmm. uh, laptops mm-hmm. and uh, just smart gadgets mm-hmm. uh, then i have a very good understanding through that job i have a very um, in depth understanding of uh, sometimes how these things work mm-hmm. it's what introduced me to virtual reality because uh, I used to sell virtual reality at six yeah. yeah this is how I realized we can actually use these things to achieve them mm-hmm. in architecture I don't think any experiences are in vain yeah so that might have been helpful that's another part, parting shot yeah mm-hmm. there are no experiences that are in vain even though they might not make sense at the beginning mm-hmm. like you said stay the course mm-hmm. yeah um, uh, stay the course Uh, do your time okay mm-hmm. and as long as your passion is correct your heart is in the right place everything ties up together at the end of the day mm-hmm. thank you I had so much fun doing this i know at the beginning you are very you are very anxious and everything uh, believe me i still get, i'm still trying to get the hang of this mm-hmm. but this was a fantastic fantastic video mm-hmm. um, i dare say it's the best that i've done this far in shooting Asante sana. Guys, I'll put a link to um, other interesting videos in, t- in finding purpose um, um, at the end of this video. Uh, thank you. Please follow London Consult on Instagram and on and Twitter. Are you also on Facebook? Just yeah, not on, on Facebook, just on Instagram and Twitter. Mm-hmm. Check out what they're doing. They have fantastic things that they're doing. You might be interested in whatever they're doing. From the grey area, as usual, uh, Dr. Grey, and today we had adi uh, with us um, thank you for uh, tuning in until next time peace